Okay, this video is about publicity. It's just a basic introduction to probability. Um, what is probability? Uh, probability is also known as um, relative frequency in some cases. Um, if you express it as a percentage, it is chance. Um, proportion is another name for probability. But regardless, what does probability do? It tells us the likelihood of an event from a process. Now I have to formally explain what an event is, and I'll do that in a bit. Um, but if I have to explain probability or even come up with a formula for probability, I have to explain a few other items. Um, the first thing would be sample space. Um, the notation for sample space is omega, or you can simply write it as SS. This is actually a set. It is the set of all possible outcomes from an experiment or a study. So in real life, if you have a sample, the sample space is nothing but the sample you are looking at. So uh, it corresponds to the sample itself. Now, if you take a simple example, um, Suppose I throw an eight-sided die. You might wonder, is it possible? Of course it is possible. If you play D&D, you know that there are a, a multiple-sided dies available for us. So if you throw an eight-sided die, the outcomes that we can get would be one through eight. So the sample space would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, an event on the other hand is another set. An event in a physical uh, definition, a manifestation of an event would just be an action or a rule that selects a subset of outcomes from the sample space. So what do I mean by that? Um, for instance, if I define A, event A is an even prime number. I'll just say getting an even prime number. So it, it is guaranteed that if I define my action as getting an even prime number, then this particular event will select a set from SS. Um, so as an example, we'll just use the eight-sided die experiment. So what would the event correspond to? Well, the set that corresponds to the event A is nothing but two. It is a singleton set. It has only one element in it, and that is the only even prime. So 
When you define the event as getting an even prime number, it selects a subset of the sample space and it selects only two. Um, another example for an event, um, let's say event B1 is or as getting an odd prime number. Now, the set corresponding to B1 is 3, 5, and 7. Now, clearly, this is a subset of the sample space. Now, that notation means subset of. So, by defining the action as B1, I'm selecting a few outcomes from the entire sample space itself and any action or any rule that I define or that a researcher defines is called the event or, uh, or the set that corresponds to that event is nothing but the set that we will make use of in finding the probability of that event B1. Uh, before I go further let me define one more event I'll call it C um, let's say getting a multiple of five. Well, the set that corresponds to event C is just five. And clearly, this particular set is a subset of the sample space because I select one outcome that satisfies my rule of getting a multiple of five when I roll an eight-sided die, and that is only one, which is five. So why do I have to define or introduce events? Anytime we talk about probability, probability is always defined for an event. Um, consider some sample space, consider a sample space SS let um, the cardinality of the sample space be defined as n. Cardinality is nothing but the number of outcomes in the sample space. So for the die example, the cardinality of the sample space was 8. Now, um, the probability of an event A is defined as P of A which is equal to the cardinality of the set A divided by the cardinality of the sample space itself. In simple terms is the number of outcomes that favour event A divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So clearly P of A is a fraction. Um, by definition, probability of A is a fraction. So P of A is a fraction and not only is it, is, it, is it a fraction, it is actually a proper fraction. In other words, um, P of A will always be between 0 and 1. 
if you get the probability of an event to be over one, it means you're actually doing something wrong. Um, because probability of an event can never exceed one, neither could pro probability of an event be negative. So it is a very, very important remark, the probability of an event A is always less than or equal to one. Probability of an event is always greater than or equal to zero. Um, in other words, probability of A could never be negative or greater than 1 because it is a proper fraction. If you observe the definition of probability, it is the number of outcomes that favour event A divided by the number of outcomes in the sample space. The sample space is the bigger set, um, and the set A is a subset of the bigger set. And there is no way possible that a subset could be bigger than the set itself. It can actually equal to the set itself, but it can't become bigger than the set. Therefore, this fraction could never exceed 1. That's why probability of A is a proper fraction. I'll do an example to demonstrate what probability is. Consider rolling an eight-sided die and define the following events. A1, getting a prime number. A2, getting an even prime number. A3, getting a multiple of 5. A4, getting a prime number greater than four. So let's find the probabilities of these four events. Let's start with a one getting a prime number. The event A1 is getting a prime number. So when I roll an eight sided die, what is the probability that I get a prime number. So it's best that we write out the sample space. The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. The possible outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now, the set corresponding to the event A1 is getting a prime number. Out of these eight possible outcomes, how many of them are prime? 2, 3, 5 and 7 are prime. Now, the probability of A1 would then be the cardinality of the event A1 divided by the cardinality of the sample space itself. The cardinality of A1 is nothing but the number of outcomes in the set A1 as defined. So, the number of outcomes in the set A1 is 4, the total number of possible outcomes in the sample space is 8, therefore the probability is 1 half or 50%. Likewise, A2 is guessing an even prime number.
what is the cardinality of the set defining the even prime number? Um, getting an even prime is just 2, because 2 is the only even prime number. Therefore, the probability of A2 would be equal to the cardinality of A2 divided by the cardinality of the sample space. The cardinality of the set A2 is so nothing but the number of outcomes in the set A2, which is just 1, divided by the total number of outcomes 8. So the probability is 1 over 8, which is 0.125 or 12.5%. Likewise, define the event, we defined it, uh, defined A3 as getting a multiple of 5. So the set defining A3 is just 5. If you roll an 8-sided die, there is only one outcome which is a multiple of 5 which is 5. So the probability of A3 would be equal to the cardinality of the event A3 divided by the cardinality of the sample space itself. The cardinality of A3 is 5, excuse me, it's 1 divided by the cardinality of the sample space, which is 8. So once again, it is 0.125 or 12.5%. Lastly, A4 is getting a prime number greater than 4. Let's write the sample space once again uh, because it's missing here. I have rule an eight-sided die, so the set of all possible outcomes are one through eight. And I would like a prime number that is greater than four. The prime numbers are two, three, five, and seven. But ha what are the primes that are actually greater than four? You have five and seven. Therefore, the set corresponding to A4 is five and seven. The probability of A4 is the cardinality of A4 divided by the cardinality of the sample space. The number of outcomes in A4 is 2. The total number of outcomes is 8. Therefore, 2 over 8 is 1 over 4, which is 0.25, which would give me 25%. So, all of these probabilities that we calculated are what we call as theoretical probabilities because we don't have a sample but we know theoretically what to expect so if today I ended up rolling a, an eight-sided die 100 times the number of times that I would get a multiple of five is not exactly going to be 12 and a half percent of 100. It's probably going to be close, but not exactly, which is because whatever probability that we found here is a theoretical probability. But uh, regardless of whether it is a theoretical probability or not, probability would always be between 0 and 1. As you can see, in every single one of our cases, A through D, the probability was always between 0 and 1. Now, before I end this gentle introduction to probability, I'll show a scenario where we don't find the theoretical probability, rather we find an empirical probability. Remark, all probabilities found in the previous problem Are theoretical probabilities. Now, instead of doing it the way, suppose I rule 
an eight sided die twenty times. Um, the recorded outcomes are as follows. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And twenty. Now let's find the same probabilities that we found previously. Now this is my sample of observations. Since I have a sample of observations, the sample space in this case is what we have in the problem itself. Let us make sure that, it, that there are 20 outcomes here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So the cardinality of the sample space is 20. So I believe the first problem that we did, event A1, is getting a prime number. Now in this case however when I find the probability I would have to write the outcomes from my sample space. I have to select from my sample space based on what I've recorded. So 2 is a prime so I see three twos Three is a prime, I see two threes. Five is a prime, I see one, two, only two fives. Seven is also a prime, and I see two sevens. Keep in mind, I can't do the same thing that I did in the previous problem because the sample space is empirical. Because I've observed the sample, I've, I have observed the outcomes of an outsider die, and I've given you those outcomes, those are the 20 outcomes that I have. So in this case, the cardinality of A1 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have 9. So, probability of A1 would be the cardinality of A1 divided by the cardinality of the sample space, which is 9 over 20, which I believe is 0.45 or 45%. So, based on the sample that I've recorded, I found the probability of getting a prime number is 45%, but recall Theoretically, probability of A1 is 50%. So any time we make an observation or conclusion using a sample, we are going to come up with an estimate closer to the theoretical value. The theoretical value here is 50%, but I ended up getting something close, which is 45%, which is based on my observations. So this probability that I just found is what we call the empirical probability. The same probability that we found in the previous attempt is the theoretical probability, but this is what we call the empirical probability because we find this probability using a sample of observations. Now, the second example that we did was getting an even prime. Um, A2 was getting 
an even prime. This has to be, since we are doing a different problem, this has to be a subset of the actual sample space that is provided. Therefore, how many even primes that we had? We had three twos among the 20 observations. So A2 would correspond to the set 2, 2 and 2. Probability of A2 would be the cardinality of A2 divided by the cardinality of the sample space, which is 3 over 20. 3 over 20 would be 0.15 or 15%. Um, recall the theoretical probability for A2 is P of A2 was 12.5% or 0.125. This is what we call the empirical probability. Empirical probability is a probability that is found using a set of observations. Theoretical probability is what we find using theory, what it actually should be. A3, um, let's go back to the problem, I believe A3 was getting a multiple of 5 and A4 was getting a prime number. Um, so According to our sample, getting a multiple of 5, how many times did I get a 5? Well, I got a 5 two times in a row. Um, two 5's there. So I'm going to go ahead and write that set, which is a subset of my sample space, 5 and 5. Now, the probability of A3 would be the cardinality of A3 divided by the cardinality of the sample space for this particular problem. So it is 2 out of 20, you'd get 0.1, which is 10%. So, and again, recall the theoretical probability for A3 is 0.125 and for the final case it is a finale um, the probability of event A4 is getting a prime number greater than Four. So A4 must be chosen from the sample space in this particular problem. So how many times did I get a prime number greater than 4? Well, there are only two prime numbers for this experiment that are greater than 4, which, is, which are 5 and 7. And I had two 5s and two 7s. Therefore, the set corresponding to the event A4 would be 5, 5, comma, 7, 7, 5, comma, 5, comma, 7, comma, 7. The probability of A4 would just be the cardinality of A4 divided by the cardinality of the sample space in this problem. The cardinality of A4 is just 4. The sample space is 20. 4 over 20 is 1 over 5 which is 0.2 or 20%. Recall, probability of A4 theoretically was found to be 25% or probability of A4 was 0.25. And again, this is what we call an empirical probability is we find this probability based on observations, but theoretically the probability is 0.25. Keep in mind, for a die example, we know the theoretical probability. For 
Um, a card example, we will know the theoretical probability. You know the theoretical probability when you toss a coin. Um, there are cases where a person can come up with a theoretical probability, but in real life, many of the cases that a statistician would be interested in um, could only have empirical probabilities. So, although I've shown you both ways, theoretical as well as empirical probabilities, a statistical analysis is usually carried out with empirical probabilities because all information a statistician gets um, is always from a sample. Um, so, uh, from a theoretical standpoint, this empirical probability, when the sample, spa, spa, sample size is increased um, ex to an extremely large value, um, this empirical probability is expected to be equal to the theoretical probability. Um, I hope that this simple introduction to probability was useful. Um, the next time I'd probably come up with uh, another video for probability rules. Um, thank you for watching.